funding analysis using the lifestyle balance sheet. Okay, now for something completely different. We're going to do some balance sheet analysis applied against household finances. That's what this template, this one page template here to the left is. We're going to fill it in with data um, <clears throat> from our informed household dashboard report and then analyze it. So let me introduce you to our fictitious couple, Christina and Sean. Uh, they're currently in their mid twenties. They live in Iowa. Uh, they want, they're both employed. They want to retire in their mid to late fifties. Um, they have very active, uh, scheduled bucket lists they want to do, they anticipate living to the mid to late nineties. They don't have kids now. We don't know what the plans are, but they love the Midwest. They plan to stay there. Okay, let me fill in some numbers first and then I'll come back and explain them. This is their, what we have now as of today in present dollar terms uh, <clears throat> regarding their savings uh, preferences. This is a percentage of each of the buckets. Uh, on the lifestyle uh, side, that's their biggest expense bucket. Here is the percentage of that. Um, and now let's talk about, go back up and talk about each of the buckets, the current financial assets. Remember their IRAs and stuff, their, their, their investments, current real assets could be part of a house, part of, you know, maybe they have an antique automobile or something. They're saving the value. As you'll notice, as I said earlier, um, the biggest issue here is the future savings, which is consumes most of their assets at this point. And that means they are, um, committing to save that much in present value terms by the time they hit their their mid 50s on the spending side uh, wow the uh, the big bucket here again is the lifestyle expenses so those are all the discretionary expenses um, and they've got plans for that um, the rest of this makes uh, let's just go through real quick educational legacy uh, that could be um, again, what their, their charity, what they want to do down the road, and then taxes, medical, and essential are all make up what we call the essential costs bucket. And this is what they anticipate it will be at the time of their retirement. Okay, so now let's calculate their funded ratio. It's 0.92. If it's less than, uh, well, it's more than 0.8 and less than 1.2, we say it's what we call a constrained condition. Uh, meaning that uh, they don't have enough cushion yet to uh, comfortably retire or safely retire. And I mean, that makes sense because um, this is so far out in the future that there's going to be a lot of variability in this model and a lot of assumptions just given the length of period that we're planning for. But with this cov uh, couple's, um, again, funding preference with using future savings or next generation capital is what we'd call it, and focusing primarily on lifestyle expenses, this is what we call a um, an aspiring young adult funding profile. And we can see it over here. I'll go a little bit bigger here. And we've got a whole uh, on the main website of the informed household describing the char characteristics and, and what these folks are interested in, what are some of the major risks and stuff that they face. Okay, so now we have the data. Let's uh, take a shot at analyzing it. We'll do it here on the bottom half. So the, the biggest question or issue probably dealing these folks is this commitment <clears throat> to get 30 years of savings to get up to this this, this nugget of, of of one million dollars and what generally happens uh, as this goes through town time is is the future savings bucket goes down and and the current financial assets go up because you're applying those contributions to the financial assets but again we're doing a point in time uh, snapshot to get an idea how much we need to, to put away and I calculated on this I was working backwards on this is about 34k and that's a big nugget uh, to put away but the way I got to it is I just said if if they need a million dollars in 30 years um, what's the future value or they need a million dollars today but what's the future value of that at a two and a half percent inflation rate uh, that comes out a, a little more than double about two million ninety seven five six seven which is in the second payment one and then if you discount it back and I gave them a, a little more aggressive uh, discount rate of 4.5% um, so that is 
that's basically their hurdle rate. That's what they need to make by all their assets after cash, after inflation, uh, to see their funded ratio number improve. So um, the further you're out, the higher you can make that discount rate, but um, you need to be realistic about it. If you think you're going to be a hot shot and can hit, um, you know, 8%, 9%, 10% a year consistently, well, good luck to you. And if you feel that lucky, go ahead and use that there. But uh, again, this hurdle rate is after tax, after inflation. It's a real rate of return that you need to average over that period to be able to, um, <clears throat> you know, get to the million mark, making those 34,382 contributions a year. So yeah, if you can get better than that, then you can make lower contributions to get to that target. Okay, so with this, we can say by far the biggest risk is um, are Christine and Sean in the right careers to support this 34K nugget of, you know, and savings per year, additional savings um, uh, to be able to reach their, their target. Um, and I'm going to switch here on the right side. If you go to our knowledge wall and under the, the lifestyle uh, risk quick definitions, we have a good little video here that explains the different risk types and we'll walk through exactly what what the you know, earnings risks are, but it's what you think uh, in that you got to have the right skills and the temperament and everything to, to to be able to have that much excess capital to save. Also, let me just mention that a lot of these icons here to the right are hot linked, uh, which this one is, and that will take you directly to these video links. Even a bigger unknown at this point is longevity risk. Um, and uh, I mean, again, since we're planning out so far in, in the future, I mean, potentially 80 years, uh, this is something, at least in our model, you got to take the time to really uh, give it some thought because uh, this has the biggest impact on, on your, your savings potential. And it's an unfortunately an unknowable thing. Um, but you know, you can still, there's tools and stuff. And I believe this link, um, let me try it here real quick. So again, this icon is hot linked. I'm, uh, and this is what it'll basically send you is what's over here too. Um, over here on the longevity icon, uh, the society of actuaries have a good planning tool, uh, that can help you better, uh, predict your, um, your mortality, which we all need to, take a serious look at it. It's a tool called the Longevity Illustrator. Highly recommend it. So next up is um, even if they do get to the, you know, 1 million bucket, which would be great in that, you know, 28, 29 years saving time frame that they're looking to do. Um, at some point, their future savings capacity is going to go down, go to zero, especially if both of them start working. And the question then is what funding profile is more appropriate? There's kind of two paths here and go the more aggressive route, uh, which is a live now or die. I'm going to swap over and find it here. Um, and these are the folks that, uh, again, have a lifestyle expenses that they um, want to focus on, but they're funding it primarily through uh, financial assets and real assets, as opposed to the other side of this. And I'm going to go to the, the next one is um, what we call the free to choosers. And these are the folks that are, are still funding lifestyle expenses primarily, but they're doing it with more um, this, what we call the, the pension assets um, and the guaranteed in, income assets are the, are the main vehicles that they're using to save and spend in retirement. Okay, I'm going to stop here. Continuing on, some other things to consider is um, <clears throat> Social Security is very difficult to es estimate at this point. You get some data from, um, you know, the, uh, the SSA, but again, you get, it's so far out and it's so dependent on what your earnings track record is. It's, a, you know, at a best, a, a guess. And so just be cognizant of that. Um, one of the best things you can do, especially as a, a young couple, is start tracking your budget and this is where in some of our earlier informed household discussions we talk about figuring out an annual budget or your annual run rate what's the ongoing expenses 
that you um, hit on a regular basis. And I'm swapping over here. Uh, and that's where in the mobile planner for each of the subscribers, we have a spending history here that um, you can go and record what you've been spending what you thought you'd be spending on again what we're really interested in are the lifestyle expenses and then the essential ones um the the legacy and the education a lot of times tend to be one off but if you have ongoing on that you can include some of those into the lifestyle expenses but what we're looking for is to get a just reoccurring expense each um, year and see how it tracks over time so very good exercise to do i'm swapping back and we would say also for liquidity risk here, even at this age, um, <clears throat> liquidity is not quite as big a deal as it is when you retire, but it's still important. And you can still, uh, it affects you. Fortunately, you tend to have more recovery power when you're young and, and you're, you know, earning. Uh, but you do want to have at least six months of essential ex uh, expending. And then the real kind of question to think about is remember when we calculated um, the contribution amount here thing to make each year the 34382 we're using a, a 4.5 hurdle rate and uh, the question is whether or not you think you can do better um, one way to, to do this is to start out with this and watch how you do over time and see if um, your your funded ratio is going up if it is then you know, you are beating your hurdle rate. If you want to uh, bump it up a little more, fine. But if you're if you're if you're not, um, you know, if your your funded ratio isn't moving up from 0.92, you're not making that hurdle rate. Um, and then finally, just as kind of a fun user tip, uh, and this is another hot link I have. Um, I like James Clear. He has a lot of good stuff on kind of behavioral stuff, especially around um, habits and stuff. So uh, his blog is up here. Um, you can't see it, but it's jamesclear.com. Um, highly recommend it. It's good to get folks, um, again, committing to a habit and staying with it. And finally, uh, you can click on that movie reel icon, and that will... Um, it's another link to the this video that you're watching you can also um on youtube there's a you can download this this pdf if you want a hard copy to take a look at it anyways there's been fun doing this and hope to see you at the, at the next uh funding analysis more balance sheet fun take care